and an organizer. He has he's currently president of the Northeast region of the United Electrical Radio and Machine Workers of America. Um, he's been a union organizer for 30 years. He's a longtime resident of Southeast Massachusetts, and he's a father, grandfather, and great grandfather. And he's taking time out of his vacation to come speak with us. So give a hand for Peter. Thank you, Sophie, and on behalf of uh, my union, my national union, the UE, United Electrical Radio Machine Works of America, I want to thank the organizers of this event to shut down Breaking Point. For all my life, we, those of us in this area go back and forth across the Braga Bridge looking at this eyesore. It's been around for about 50 years. So from those of us who were, were pre-195, we used to see it from Route 6. And as 195 was getting developed, we see Brighton Point get developed. We never really understood the effect of it until you get out of the middle of Buzzards Bay and you see the ring around the bathtub. And the ring around the bathtub is a yellow haze just above the horizon that surrounds you as you're in the middle of Buzzards Bay. It's always been a consequence of Brighton Point, something that most of us grew up with. My union has long rejected the choice between jobs and the environment. <laughs> of jobs and pollution are caused by corporate desire to privatize profits and socialize costs. Pollution and other environmental destruction more negatively affect the working class, communities of color, and indigenous people than the white, the wealthy, and the privileged. My union fully supports a just transition where groups of workers and communities should not have to shoulder the burden caused by the transition from a fossil fuel based economy to one based on renewable energy. What the hell are we doing to this planet? It is the sole provider of the resources for the human beings and all other species to exist and to live. The earth is literally our mother. I'm a union organizer. I've been doing it for 35 years. If workers are pissed off, they might call us for assistance and support if they're unhappy at work. If the boss is unreasonable and will you want to figure out what's the cause and how do you arrive at a better conclusion that makes the workplace better, more democratic, more stable, and happier, you call us. Because of our collective experience of a few thousands of years, we know that workers joining together in a union to speak with one voice will overcome all adversity. If you want a union, if you want protection on the job, you don't call the boss. You call a union organizer. You get workers together and you join a union. It's pretty simple, right? Right. If a lot of people begin to get sick in a particular community, like happened just east of here, about 10 miles, where massive amounts of PCBs that were used in the manufacture of, air, of transformers by Aerovox and General Electric as an insulator if they were dumped in the early to the late decades of the 90s around the New Bedford community by order of corporate officials and assent from the city's elected leadership. Neighborhoods and schools were built on these dumps. So the medical community made a forensic analysis. They arrived at a diagnosis of the symptoms and the ones the consensus took shape that humans and houses shouldn't live with PCBs, solutions started to take shape and appropriate measures are taken to cure or prevent the toxins from spreading further. This has happened at hundreds of communities throughout this nation. We know now that the production and the dumping of these toxins was directed by corporate executives who felt it was worth the risk for cheap electrical transmission. But when you work in the suite on the top floor. You aren't exposed to the toxins. We are on the ground floor. So for us, when the medical community says this, that, or the other thing about toxins, we listen. We take them seriously. And then based upon their advice, we work to undo the damage and not do it anymore. We take their advice. Pretty simple, right? Right. If after decades of observation and research, 97% of peer-reviewed scientists 
state that human activity is the cause of global warming. It's not climate change, it's global warming. Why would anyone in their right mind ignore this overwhelming consensus? There are huge vested interests of coal, fossil fuel, and nuclear energy generation that believe their company, their or their shareholders' profits, are critical to the protection and security of reliable electricity generation. They will go to any lengths to protect their money and interests and dissuade working people that decentralized renewable energy production is our future with good, solid union jobs and a sustainable planet for future generations. We must demonstrate, we must show them that their vision of profit by petrol or by coal is wrong. It is wrong for this community in Swansea, in Somerset, in Seacock, in Fall River, in New Bedford, in Dartmouth, in Westport. It is wrong for New England. It is wrong for the Commonwealth. It is wrong for the nation, and it is wrong for the world. From, nine, from 1913 to 1923, the number of Model Ts built by Ford went from $170,000 each year to over two million within a 10-year period. In the fight against fascism in the 40s, the U.S. completely converted manufacturing to a wartime economy in less than a year. This is such a time. We have the capability and the capacity for the mass production of renewable and life-sustaining generation of electricity. We must convert our economy from killer coal and purgatory petrol to an economy that supports the production of renewable, life-sustaining energy production. If a former head of NASA says that 80% of global warming is created by the generation of electricity by coal, I, for one, am going to believe him. I, for one, am going to believe the 97% of peer-reviewed scientists. And it follows that the shutdown of coal-fired power plants ought to be one of the human race's highest priorities. You would think. However, capitalism and its special financial interests are powerful adversaries in the conversion of our plan to renewable, life-sustaining energy generation. The question is how, by when, who is going to provide the resources, and what about the jobs that are produced by coal and fossil fuels and nuclear? What about the jobs? What about the communities? What about the families that, are, that make their living off of these jobs? Aside from the fact that very few people choose to work a mile underground in lousy conditions for any boss, you do it because you have to feed yourself and your family. But don't kid yourself. I'll bet 95 out of 100 miners would choose working above ground in the daylight building or installing wood turbines or geothermal wells, or community housing, or railway lines, than being a mile deep in the earth. People don't choose to work a mile beneath the earth so their kids can eat. We do it because we have to. A better job is better than the one that they might have had before. But sisters and brothers, myself, members of my family, the sisters and brothers from West Virginia, they understand that a job is not a job is not a job. But the conversion process, people have to make the same living they're gonna make producing wind than they did producing coal. That's the way that we get the support of the working class. <laughs> Myself, members of my family, hundreds of thousands of members of my union, along with maybe yourselves, members of your family and your community in this commonwealth, have for 30 years lost jobs and rebuilt our lives. If you were a member of our union, you experienced not only job loss, but you were supported, at least in Massachusetts, with unemployment and health insurance. And if your plant closed due to foreign competition as part of a federal government trade adjustment act, you received these benefits for up to two years, as long as you were old in education and training. We need an energy conversion assistance program for workers like the temporary adjustment assistance act, like the trade adjustment act. But better first, every worker who works at Brayton Point should have the opportunity to build the turbines that are going to be placed in Nantucket Sound. Woo!
Johnson and the deployment of the wind turbines for Cape Wind will create over 600 jobs in southeastern Massachusetts. Hire community residents of renewable energy projects. Provide them with the support and sustenance necessary to maintain a decent union standard of living. Get us off coal. Get us off oil. No dukes. Without a union, it's only you against the boss. And if you don't stop global warming, nothing else matters anyway. Amen. Thank you.